It is a mild and cloudy morning as Christopher Blanchett approaches BBC Scotland's headquarters in Glasgow to prepare and present the weather forecast. My name is Christopher Blanchett. I am a weather presenter here at BBC Scotland. Um, I'm a geography graduate and I came into this profession uh, several years ago now. And it's my job to present the weather for BBC Scotland across radio, television and online. And today I'll be presenting the weather for the main programme at lunchtime and in the evening as well. We start our day around about midday and are here for 10 hours. We come in, look at the forecast and uh, create a weather show that we then go on television and talk to the audience to illustrate what's happening with the weather uh, and what's happened with the weather. And certainly we do that not only on television but on radio as well. Well, this is the office that I sit in um, every day. Behind me, I have two computers, a normal PC that you'd be used to, but also a weather computer. This is uh, what drives our weather graphics, the sort of thing that you see on television. Um, all the data from the Met Office, all the various weather models come into this computer here, and then all of the weather is displayed on the various charts. And we can adjust those charts and make it show what we want it to show in order to best tell the weather story of the day. So a lot of our time is taken up creating those weather charts and uh, weather shows and there's a huge wealth of information behind this screen. We can look at any data point right across the globe whether that be temperature, cloud, rain, wind and we can then show you whatever's going on depending on what uh, is happening where you are and indeed what we're trying to convey. So every single day every few hours we're getting a new run of data that comes in directly from the Met Office and that's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of points of information and data not only model data where the cloud and the rain is modeled but what we call point data where we'll look at a particular area or column of air above a point in the ground and that gives us information on wind and temperature uh, for that location at that particular elevation so it's hugely powerful and through a few clicks of a button I can look at the temperature in Perth in Scotland or Perth in Australia and not only for right now but for five, six, seven, eight days into the future and not only the daytime temperature but the evening temperature as well and that's the same for all sorts of data points as I say whether it's temperature, wind, rain, cloud and uh, frost and snow and lots of other things too. Like many people, when I was thinking about my own higher education, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, so I chose something that I enjoyed studying whilst I was at school, and that was geography. So I'm a geography graduate, uh, but then when I'd finished my degree, even then I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do as a career. So I went on to do a master's in television journalism, and that led me into a journalism background. I've worked at the BBC for a number of years now, originally in journalism, working for big news programmes in London uh, and working across several different newsrooms. And then from there I moved into weather at the BBC and uh, that's what led me to where I am today here at BBC Scotland. And it was that love of weather that I probably sort of found when I first studied it back uh, doing A-levels in high school that really sort of piqued my interest to move away from news and into weather but really it was studying geography that set me up for not only the weather career that I do now but also the journalism career because as a subject geography is learning and understanding the world around you and certainly that's uh, what journalism is all about. So weather is a 24-7, 365 business. There's weather models running all the time right across the globe by uh, various different weather agencies. In the UK we tend to rely on the Met Office quite heavily, uh, the UK Met Office, and uh, the sort of models that they put out, uh, weather models, we get to look at every few hours. Uh, this one here is their global model and that's looking up to five days into the future and it gives us a steer on what's happening with the cloud, the rain, weather systems, high pressure, low pressure and we can see through various timestamps what's happening as we go through the next uh, one to five days 
and this is a global model as its name suggests covering the entire globe but they also have smaller meso scale models which concentrate particularly on the UK and that gives us greater fidelity in terms of uh, the detail so the meso model will look at particularly showers or showery activity and will take into account topography a lot more than the global model does so on television if you saw the forecast for the next 24 to 48 hours the model data that you see displayed on a BBC weather chart comes from that meso scale model and you can see more clearly individual showers uh, individual breaks in the cloud individual areas that will have a different temperature because of the topography that's surrounding that town or city and then when you go to the more broad brush model the showers sort of emerged into a, a, a bigger area of rain because it's a bigger scale therefore it's giving a more brush approach really but we can go further into the future. Now there are several models uh, in use by the Met Office and they also look at other institutions around the globe and all these models combined is what's used to determine what's happening with the weather in the forecast because in theory they're all looking at the same information and they're all information led. There's a huge amount of data that run these models and it's constantly being fed whether that's from air balloons, stations on the ground, ships at sea and it's this data that's put into the supercomputers and then used to develop the weather models and develop the forecast and at the very end of the chain that comes down to us and then a little bit further you'll see that distilled into a useful forecast on television that you might hear on radio or indeed on an app on your smartphone in the palm of your hand. Now it's not just two minutes of work at the end of the day that you might think it is. In fact, we do somewhere in the region of 35 to 40 broadcasts a day. That's across radio, television and online. So there's a lot of work involved. We start at four in the morning on the breakfast shift and it runs for about 10 hours. But let's go to the TV studio and see how that side of things works. Well, this is Studio C. This is our main news and sports studio here at BBC Scotland. And if you just come this way, you can see that behind me, we have the weather chart. This is where I would stand to do the weather forecast. And obviously over my shoulder, the main news desk. That's where the newsreader sits and reads the headlines and the news stories from. But let's talk a bit more about the weather and what goes on behind me. This is just one hour of one day and we've got several hours and several days worth of information not just for Scotland but right across the UK and indeed right across the globe and we can look at any point in time and any location on the earth to see what's happening with the weather because no weather is uh, in isolation from anywhere else it's all interconnected and weather systems that happen away across the other side of the Atlantic will have some bearing on the sort of weather that we'll have in a few days time and in fact when it comes to weather modelling quite often we're looking at weather in a few days time based on what we think is going to happen hasn't happened yet what we think is going to happen thousands of miles away so when you think about it like that it's quite remarkable really that we're waiting for weather to happen perhaps off the eastern seaboard of the US and then we're expecting that to come across the Atlantic in a particular direction to develop in a particular intensity and then affect us here. So there's lots of parameters and lots of things that could go awry with that forecast. If you think perhaps it's a track could change by a few degrees, uh, by the time you extrapolate that out and it gets to our side of the Atlantic, it could be 50, 100, 200 miles further north or south than we thought and for you and I that means the difference between it being wet or dry and of course if we say it's going to be wet and it's dry we've got it wrong so it's no use so there's a lot of information that goes into the weather model a lot of information that we get out of the weather model and it's crucial that it's as reliable as it can be and that's also a reason why the weather forecast changes because weather constantly changes it's never stationary it never stays the same and it's constantly evolving even over the next few hours, the short term, we'll be looking at what's happening and whether or not it's going to plan and we will tailor and adjust our forecasts um, in response to that. So it's a constantly evolving um, thing really and the atmosphere is chaotic, nothing is straightforward, nothing stays the same for very long at all. 
So it always keeps us on our toes and keeps our job pretty interesting. Now to many people, the weather forecast is really just a case of, will I get wet tomorrow? Will I need an umbrella? Uh, will it be dry enough to put the washing out? But the scope and importance of the weather forecast goes a lot further than that. It's not just for you and I sat at home watching television or listening to the radio. Think of all the industry and companies that rely heavily on knowing what's going to happen with the weather. Whether that be growers or farmers wanting to know whether or not they can harvest their crops or um, sow their seeds to the aviation industry, whether there's going to be a big impact from a snow event and close airports or, or fog that's likely to delay flights, or indeed uh, fishermen and women out at sea to know what exactly is happening uh, with the wind and whether or not they're going to be able to get in and out of harbour safely. And also, have you ever wondered uh, or even thought about when in the middle of the summer you go to the supermarket and there's stacks of disposable barbecues there ready for you to pick up and buy. Now that's all related to the weather forecast because suppliers and sellers will want to know what's likely to happen. Are we going to have hot weather? Is there going to be a peak in demand for items like barbecues or picnic food or perhaps Wellington boots? And that is all related to the weather forecast because all of these industries uh, rely on weather professionals to let them know what we think is going to happen and then they adjust their business, their buying, their selling priorities as a result of that. And also think about when you drive to school or work or home, if it's cold in the winter then there'll be gritters out on the road. How do they know to be out on the road? It's down to a weather forecast saying the temperature is likely to drop to a certain level tonight, therefore there's likely to be icy patches. Therefore, it's a good idea to get the gritters out to reduce the impact of that weather phenomenon and reduce the uh, impact of potentially icy roads that could lead to some travel disruption. So the breadth and scope of the weather forecast really is huge indeed and affects every element really of your uh, everyday life. Not only those things I've mentioned but what about the demand on heating and fuel for your homes to heat them and uh, light them. A lot of that is also uh, heavily related to the weather forecast and all this information is used by all these various different agencies to ensure that everything runs and operates as normal. So it's not just what you see when you're watching at home, but really every aspect of your life, at some point, weather will be a factor and a consideration. So here we have the synoptic chart or pressure chart, and this is telling us an awful lot of information about what's happening uh, with the atmosphere and the weather. You can see there an area of high pressure uh, down towards the Bay of Biscay, stretching down towards the Azores. We also have areas of low pressure marked up uh, across parts of Norway and Finland. And these high and low pressures indicate the level of pressure being exerted on the surface of the Earth. In between these areas of high pressure, we have isobars, which indicate the changing levels of pressure. So from very high to very low pressure, and the lines indicating where that pressure changes. Now, as you may know, the closer together the, these lines are, then the windier it will be because the pressure is changing more quickly. On top of that, we also have weather fronts. You can see we have a warm front here and indeed a cold front here. Now, this warm front is set to move across the UK. Behind it, warm air because it's at the front of the warm air. And then the cold front trailing and that is at the front of the cold air. So as this warm front moves in across the UK, we're going to have some warmer, milder air coming in with it, and then the cold air follows in as the cold front moves across. So there's a lot of information on these synoptic charts, and ideally you should be able to look at it and work out what's going on, but obviously it's our job to help try and explain that. Where we have weather fronts, we also have precipitation, 
You can see here we've got outbreaks of rain all the way along the front, and with a cold front, that rain is typically a narrow band of rain. With the warm front, it's a lot wider over a greater period of distance, and also some outbreaks of rain expected. But really, what we're looking at this situation is the fact that the northeast of Scotland is in that warm sector air. We've also got some mountains to stop the cloud coming over so it breaks up. So we're likely to see the warmest conditions right across the northeast. You can see a little bit of sunshine on the chart there. And it will stay fairly mild for the time of year until this cold front sweeps through, replacing that mild sector air with colder weather and uh, subsequently a drop in temperature. As well as the model data, the forecasted data that's coming in, we're looking at what we call observed data, that is what's happening right now. And one of the crucial bits of kit is satellite data. Satellites flying around the globe, up in space, looking down and taking pictures, essentially, of the weather. This is a satellite image. Uh, this is the most recent one that's come in from space and you can see it's taking a picture of the cloud and crucially where there isn't cloud. So you can see on the chart there it's a pretty cloudy day across western parts of the country. Across eastern areas though where there isn't any clouds, well there'll be some sunshine. And this is really important because it allows us to see where the systems develop, move across the globe and then also uh, tend to fade away as well. And not only does it tell us well, where it's going to be cloudy and where it's going to be sunny, but we can see by looking at the tops of the clouds, by looking at the depth of the cloud, the intensity of it, exactly how vigorous those weather systems are likely to be. When you look at a weather system coming across the Atlantic, it could have a great big swirl in it, and from that you can tell uh, certain things about that weather system, whether it's going to be particularly stormy or not. Obviously you read it uh, in conjunction with other aspects as well, uh, observations from ground level. We'll look at it in conjunction with radar to see actually what's coming out of that cloud and uh, how heavy any precipitation might be. So observed data is very important when it comes to forecast data because the forecast is derived by looking and studying what's happening in the atmosphere right now. And if we understand what's happening right now, we can then work out what we think is likely to change, where that weather is likely to go, and what weather we're likely to see in the future. We use lots of different tools and tricks to display data to help you understand what's happening with the weather forecast. And weather and climate are closely linked. And if we take a look at what I have behind me, this is a temperature bar chart and average temperature for the middle of February around 8 degrees but you'll see this week we're way above that into double digit territory. So we're using historical climate data to compare with what we're seeing to see whether or not that is what we might expect. And as you can see the average line there, the red line, uh, running through the charts and we're way above that because of the various weather setups that we have at the moment. And a lot of people say to me, well, is this unusual? Well, it's not unusual, it's not unheard of, but it doesn't happen all the time because obviously we have the average temperature there. But it can go above the average, likewise it can go below the average. In fact, as we head in towards next week, 13 degrees, we could well be above that, more like 15 or 16 degrees. But if we look at the historical climate records, we need to go back to uh, 1869, and in February that year, we had an afternoon high of 16.9 degrees. So that's where the importance of historical climate data comes into effect, because we can see whether or not the weather that we're having and experience or likely to experience today, tomorrow, and over the next few days, is what we might expect, and then how big the difference is between the average, the trend, versus the reality. Thank you. And we count it to Christopher in three, two, one. Thank you. Hello there. Good afternoon. Well, some lovely spells of sunshine for some of us this morning. Unlike the news, there is no script for the weather forecast. 
The rehearsal is an opportunity to practice before the live transmission. It's warm front in the west and that cloud will edge its way north and eastwards uh, over the next few hours. If you had some blue skies this morning, expect things to cloud over. And whilst it will be largely dry, that warm front in the west producing the odd spot of light rain or drizzle at times, but really few and far between. Looking ahead towards Sunday, and reasonably dry but fairly cloudy for central, southern and eastern Scotland. So any sunshine really destined for the east coast in the northwest with the Highlands and Islands Ten, wet and breezy. Nine, and that's a similar eight, theme as we head through towards seven, Monday, but six, in the northeast. It five, could be exceptionally open, mild with temperatures three, into the mid two, That's the forecast. One. Thank you very much indeed. Hello there, good afternoon to you. Well, some lovely spells of sunshine across the north and northeast of the country today. Elsewhere, fairly leaden skies, quite murky at times too. And you can see on the satellite picture this warm front in the west slowly edging its way eastward, so if you've got the sunshine at the moment, it could well cloud over. Lovely pictures though coming in from my weather watch of this one taken in Aberdeen earlier. Largely dry, but that warm front just producing the odd spot of light rain or drizzle, but really anywhere weather few and far between. Another mild day with temperatures around 8 to 11 Celsius, warmest across the northeast. Winds generally light, but they will strengthen around the west coast and across the Hebrides as we head through towards this evening. And then uh, things taking a bit of a turn as a cold front arrives, bringing outbreaks of rain, so a cloudy, damp night, but a mild night. Temperatures around 6 to 8 Celsius at their lowest in town. To the weekend, and that cold front meaning a rather soggy start to Saturday, certainly for central and western Scotland, further east. Generally drier, any rain here, very light and patchy. The afternoon, a little more promising for the central belt, the south and the east, something brighter coming through, drier certainly. Showers in the northwest, but in the sunshine on the Murray coast, temperatures into the low teens. And then for Sunday, well, largely dry for central, southern and eastern Scotland. In the west and northwest, thicker cloud outbreaks of rain, breezy from the southwest, but once again, very mild. And that theme continues into Monday. Outbreaks of rain across the northwest, but the northeast. Well, here we can see temperatures into the mid-teens. That's the forecast. Bye. Thanks very much for that, Chris. And that's all for now from everybody here on the Lunchtime programme. Have a very good afternoon. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. Well, hopefully that's given you an insight into the job I do using my background in geography to earn a living. And certainly the outlook looks bright for geographers with data skills in the future. Thank <laughs> you.